men by the biggest margin. They include Atlanta, 121%, New York, 117%, and San Diego, 115%. And as Warren Farrell notes, the 03 Census Bureau current population survey showed that, quote, when women and men work less than 40 hours a week, the women earn more than the men. I can tell you this is true. Um, the singer of our band, uh, Serenity, Christelle will tell you, she, by the time she actually gets to work and is done with her makeup and this and that and that and this, I make what she makes in, like, a, a, again, a, over half the time. She'll work four hours and make what I make in seven. So I get it. It does happen. I live it. I see it happen. And if Serenity was here, she would laugh at me. And she'd say, ha ha, I'm rich. You're not. All right. Uh, she's not really rich. I'm kidding. As Warren Farrell notes, two, in 03, Census Bureau population survey showed it to be true. That, well, 1,134% for between 25 to 34 hours per week. Also, Men and women have different career goals. It's very likely that women will take a job that is less demanding. Uh, like, you don't find a lot of women underwater drillers, which is incredibly uh, dangerous, for instance. It says, once you dig a little deeper, it becomes abundantly clear that men and women do not treat work or life in the same way. By either culture, biology, or a mix of the two, men place a higher value on income. For example, a survey of a man and woman's reasons for obtaining an MBA found that men acquiring an MBA aspire to become president or CEO of a public or private company. Women MBAs, however, ranked management consulting, executive level vice president positions, and nonprofit executive management high among their career goals. Men expect to hold the top leadership positions, and for women, they simply do not expect to do so. It says men go into technology and hard sciences more than women. Men tend to take on more stressful jobs and not, that are not just 9 to 5. Men are more likely to work longer hours, and pay gap widens for every hour over 40 hours per week worked. Women are more likely to have gaps in their careers primarily because of child rearing and child care. And there's a number of other reasons here. And let me say, before you say I'm hating on women, I'm somebody that cares more about art and fact than money. Many of you know that I ask for money on this show from you all the time. I'm going to ask for it now. The correct views at Hotmail.com. Get a hold of me. I'll tell you where to send money. Why? Because I'm trying to make between twenty-five dollars and $30,000 a year by doing this show and only this show. And if you don't ask for money, you don't get money. This notion that it's a gender gap is just another way to keep people fighting against everybody else. If you think that all women are the enemy, women, if you think that all men are the enemy, then it's just one more way to divide us. The point is that if a woman was sitting in this chair, guess what? She's going to ask for between twenty-five to 30000 a year. Um... If I actually did this as a job and hired Christelle, I'm going to need like thirty dollars to $35,000 a year because I'm going to have to pay her at least ten grand to keep doing uh, which, what she does. And if it became a three-hour show, we'd be having different camera angles, sound effects, uh, hours of work for her. And, of course, that's where I'm trying to take the show. My point being, this idea that gender is behind someone asking for money or someone getting paid a certain amount simply isn't true. A job pays a certain amount whether you are male or female. Now, if I was a knockout pretty girl, I'd probably make a lot more money than if I was a bodybuilder buff guy. Since I'm neither one, I guess I'm screwed. All right. Friends, if you don't laugh, then you're, I don't know, tune in to somebody else. If you can't joke around, then this is the wrong show for you. Friends, real quick, I got three more articles to get to. Four ways this food crushes cancer and inflammation of your body. I'm delighted about this. Christelle is going to cry because I absolutely love asparagus. And this article says... 
that not only does it help prevent cancer, but you can even buy canned asparagus. There's no GMO asparagus. All asparagus will do for you what this does. And this is the only health thing I'm doing. So if it bores you, skip ahead five minutes. Unless you're live, <laughs> then you're stuck. One, master antioxidant. Asparagus has one of the highest concentrations, and there's links all over this article. I'm not going to report on every one. Of glutothione, one of the master antioxidants made in the body. As we begin to age, our ability to make this needs to be bolstered by dietary intake. It appears to have a broad range of functions that reduce cancer risk, including detoxifying foreign substances that are carcinogenic, that means cancer-causing for you Drake fans, protecting from free radical damage and boosting immunity by increasing uh, lymphocytes such as T and B cells and natural killer cells. I still say uh, he, he's Drake's even lucky that Madonna gave him the time of day. I'm just saying. And I don't really like both of them. Two, inflammation inhibitor. Inflammation has long been associated with the development of all disease, including cancer. It is central to the development of changes in the cells that lead to tumor promotion and progression. This means that reducing inflammation is pivotal to avoiding cancer. How many of you have lost someone to cancer? It took my father out. That's why I will not quit reporting on what stops it. Asparagus. Christelle, quit giving me that look and eat your damn asparagus, is rich in saponins, compounds that have hardcore anti-inflammatory actions on the body. Three, plant power. Asparagus is also an excellent source of polysaccharides, specialized plant carbohydrates that have actions against various cancers. As an example, polysaccharides and medical mushrooms have made them notorious cancer fighters. Now, why is that important? Because you don't want to eat mushrooms. You don't. Trust me, I used to eat them all the time. I love them. We reported on Fukushima earlier. Guess what? You know what a carp does in the in the water? They suck up all the crap and they all the all the toxins and you have to be careful how you clean a carp or a catfish because if you break the mud line, you're going to be eating crap. Mushrooms soak up radiation. Many mushrooms come from California. Eating mushrooms is very, very bad. You can get these same polysaccharides by eating asparagus, okay? That's excellent news. Fourth and last, asparagus for cancer researching the cancer defeater. In other recent research, another link, scientists in India, what I'm thinking, I'm India, and I'm thinking you should listen to what I'm saying. Scientists in India found evidence that asparagus leaf extract produced anti-proliferative and apoptic effects against renal cell carcinoma cells, that's cancer. To achieve an apoptic effect is to return a cancerous cell to enough normality that it can be made to die as scheduled. Remember that cancer is caused by cells in the body that uh, both mutate and refuse to die. What's all that mean? It means eat your damn asparagus, Christelle, and everyone else. Uh, two more stories to get to. The dumb of the day is going to be after this, so don't zone out. I've been making the shows longer. It's been 46 minutes. Why? I made you a promise. The more you view, the more I will post. The more in-depth I will get, the more stories I will do. The more silliness. All of it. All the stuff that you tune in for. Somebody has been sharing this show. And I have so many hits on my channel in the last week that YouTube hasn't even been able to count them past 301. You're going to watch like that? You're going to share like that? Then I'm going to keep my promise like that. Friends, this is a BizPack review. Joe Saunders, our laws, not Sharia. A hero, I might say, female mayor tells unhappy Muslims, respect them, obey them, and embrace them. Listen to this. I, I absolutely fell in love with this woman. 
Cheers erupted in the city council meeting room in Irving, Texas last week as the city passed an ordinance to make sure foreign laws would never replace American or Texas laws. And it says the city's Muslim activists weren't happy. Look up Sharia law. Not all Muslims. If you're not one of these Muslims, then I'm not insulting you. If you are one of these Muslims, I am insulting you. Some Muslim bonehead bastards want to bring Sharia law, look it up, into our country. Sharia, S-H-A-R-I-A for you Lady Gaga fans. If you want Sharia law in this country, guess what? You're an idiot. And I am in full support of this woman on this. That's because the 5-4 vote supported, who was the bone, four boneheads that tried to stop it? supported a proposed state law that was inspired by the establishment of a Muslim tribunal in Irving that supporters say is meant only to help local Muslims use Islamic laws, like we give a rat's ass about Islamic laws, to settle domestic disputes. But critics say it's the first step to getting Sharia law implemented in Texas. Let me tell you what. If I start the religion of Sam, that'd be pretty scary. And if you disrespect... David Lake stickers from Sticker Jerky, you get 50 lashes. That's between me and anybody stupid enough to join. But if you think that it's going to hold any weight, you are in the wrong country and we don't really care if you're offended. How's that? It says that the elephant in the room is that it's anti-Sharia bill. One activist told the local CBS station, well, anything that is anti-Sharia, I am pro. Within reason, don't hurt or kill anybody. If you don't say that, you'll have one listener that does. Irving Mayor Beth Van Dween is an outspoken opponent of the Muslim Tribunal and the possibility of Sharia law in the U.S., but stressed during Thursday's council meeting that the ordinance did not mention Sharia by name or any other religion. The point, she said, is that American and state civil laws reign supreme and no foreign law has standing Respect the, obey them, embrace them, she said. What a hero for keeping that BS out of here. And friends, that brings us to the dum dee dum dee dum dee of the day. 49 minutes, Christelle. Have I kept my promise? If you tune in, that I will give you more in-depth news. Have I done so? I'm pretty sure you have. Very good. A uh, judge bans constitution in Ohio, Kurt Nemo, prisonplanet.com, the dum de dum de dum de dum de dum de of the day. A judge in Xenia, XENIA, Ohio, said there will be no mentioning of the constitution, Sega Heil Crystal, during the trial of a journalist who is charged with a misdemeanor after he was cited for protesting against an anti panhandling ordinance. Christelle, when we were going to work today, did I not tell you to give money to a bum? And you told me, and I'm going to say bum because he's a bum. You told me not to do it, didn't you? Yep. You know what? This guy was very likely scamming us. I believe this, friends. And you don't have to believe this. Christelle believes it deep down. She won't interrupt me. We were, in fact, were we not, Christelle, told by God that we, those who ask we should give. If he wastes the money, the sin is his. The sin is not ours. Correct. Uh, Christelle, Christelle got bent. Uh, real quick, uh, we, we, hey, everybody's been watching. We could talk longer. Explain why you don't trust some panhandlers and quote-unquote bums. One day I was at a local family dollar store, and this bum came up and said, Hey, do you have any money so that I can get some gas? I've got kids at home. Give me a very lengthy story. And so I gave him $5 because I had a very, very good night at work. And I said, here, man, this will get you anywhere where you absolutely need to go. And he said, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, I go back a couple weeks later and the same bum with the same story comes up and I said, man, I'm sorry, I gave that, I gave you $5 last week. And pretty much from there, I'm hesitant on 
big amount. And you know what? That happens to a lot of people. Our drummer, Nick, worked in a convenience store. He has horror stories about bums. I give to like all the bums because I assume if that happens, the sin is theirs. But I understand why people are against it. But listen, this goes one step further. Judge Catherine Barber laughed when the defendant, Virgil Vaduva, argued his protest on a public sidewalk outside of Xenia police station constitutes free speech. It says the exchange between Barber and Vaduva occurred after a prosecutor said that mention in the Constitution during the trial would confuse the jury. So we now live in a world where the jury is confused by the Constitution, the law of the land. That's wonderful news. That's, that's just freaking great. Widespread ignorance of the Constitution that says many Americans are surprisingly ignorant of the Constitution and the founding principles of the United States. And what's interesting about this is one of the people that we found in real life to know more about the Constitution than most people do, look up becoming Paul Revere. Christelle, is it not true? We found a drunk, homeless man that knew more about the Constitution than almost, not all, almost everyone that we interviewed that was there. Like, he, he, he knew what was going on as much as the senator, didn't he? He's absolutely correct. It says, an informer ABC News poll conducted in 2011, they revealed that 70% of 1,000 people surveyed could not identify the supreme law of the land. It is the Constitution, by the way. 61% didn't know the length of a U.S. senator's term is six years. I would have missed that for some reason. I th I would have said eight. I'm just being honest. If I have my credibility, I have nothing. I'm good. I'm not perfect. 63% couldn't name the number of Supreme Court justices on the bench, which is nine. And 86% didn't know that 435 members fill the U.S. House of Representatives. Did I know that? I know it's based on the, the, the population of any given state. Exact number? No. But my point being, those who ban mentioning the Constitution downplay those of us that actually know what they're talking about. Do I know every exact number? No. I, you know what? I actually don't. I have to look up a lot of what I report. And that's why it's called the correct views. It's not called the correct views because, oh, yeah, she'll use this against me forever, because I said it. It's called the correct views because I wouldn't be sitting here reporting it if I didn't find out about it somehow. Earlier polls show ignorance of the Constitution is a longstanding problem. For example, in 1998, Lunt's research survey showed that 59% of 13 to 17 year olds identified Mo, Larry, and Curley, while only 41% could cite correctly the legislative and executive and judicial branches. That's terrifying. I, mean, I knew that when I was like nine, not to brag, but since I slammed myself earlier, I should be allowed to brag now. I knew that at like nine. I'm dead serious. It says the National Constitution Center interviewed 1,000 adults and found that 24% could not name a single right guaranteed by the First Amendment. If you don't know at least freedom of speech is in the First Amendment, you are part of the problem. Might I ask, how in seven hells did you find this show? Only so, because the guy, a host, look like an idiot. Only six percent can cite freedoms. <laughs> of course, I, see Christelle. Anytime I deprecate myself, she's like a ball of laughter. <laughs> Only what the hell? Now hiring a behind-the-scenes queen. I just hey. fired mine. Only 6%... Not really, guys. He's joking. She hopes. Only 6% can cite freedom of speech, press, assembly, and religion. 52% do not know that the Senate has 100 members, and only 1 in 6 believes the Constitution created a Christian nation. Yes, yeah, because they don't know how to spell Christian, I guess. I don't know. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGange, literally, it is 456. I've given you like an hour-long show. I promised you, if you tuned in, I would keep going. I don't know who's doing the view thing, 
you get me enough money to make it my job, I will make it my job. You can donate at the correct views at hotmail.com. You guys don't know me. If you're not a regular viewer, I, you send me a check, I'll put the check up and tell you what I spent it on. I'm dead serious. It's not about making money. It's also not about starving to death. And that's what freaks me out when people are like InfoWars. They ask for money because they want vitamin D or they want... They're doing this because they don't want to be beholden to General Electric. Christelle, would you like to stop all Fukushima updates because we need to kiss General Electric's ass? No. No. So I need you listening to donate so that if I say something and it pisses you off, maybe you won't send me any more money. But I'm not beholden to everything you say. If I try to sell this show to big stream advertisers, I'm going to be beholden to them. So yeah, I'm asking for money. And I've decided to be a little more out there with it. I DJ in a strip club. You know what? I'm the best damn strip club DJ you've ever seen. But maybe I would be a little more well-placed doing this more often. You guys make it a reality, I will be there. It's 4.58 in the morning, I've been with you for an hour. You make this happen, I'll be with you three hours. Because, let's face it, friends, I've always been real with you. Good night, God bless, thank you for tuning in to The Correct Views. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, look up the work of Kyle, Court, D-Lake, and myself. Adios!